Okay, we are now recording. All right, welcome everyone to this, uh, to another public meeting of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, I'm Philip Malkovich, the current uh, chair of the board, and um, let's start with introductions. Uh, just tell us who you are, where you're from, uh, why you're here, why you're interested, why you're interested um, in this. Um, and let's start with, um, yeah, let's start with our host, with Liana. Hi, everyone. I am Liana Davis. I am with the Wiki Education Foundation. That's why um, my logo says Wiki Education there, but I promise it's actually me. Um, I am based in San Francisco, California, and I am the treasurer of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Great, Susanna, do you want to continue? Um, hi, everyone. I am Susanna from Armenia. I am chair of the Wikimedia Armenia. Also, I am board member, a member of Wikipedia and education. I am very, very interested in education uh, via Wikipedia. Awesome. JS, do you want to go next? Sure, I'm Jim Salzman, Mountain View, California. I've been involved with uh, Wikimedia projects for oh, 15 years now, and um, I'm interested in building solutions for education. All right, Galder. Hello, I'm Galder from the Basque Wikimedia User Group, and I'm currently working on the education program. Awesome, Judith. Hello, Judith. I'm sorry, I have to unmute. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I'm Judy Davidson. I'm at the University of Massachusetts Lowell, um, just north of Boston. I'm pretty new to this. I've come in to see what you're doing because um, we've just started, Wiki started a Wikipedia initiative here on campus. This week, we're starting our Wiki Scholars program. Thank you, Wiki Education. And I, when I saw video, I said, ooh, our students are gonna like that. I'd like to see what's going on here. So I've just come to look at that. Thank you. Awesome. Zafer? Hi, everyone. I'm from Turkey. Uh, I'm admin on Turkish Wikipedia. And uh, I'm board member also to Wikimedia User Group Turkey. Uh, we are going to do sometimes to the universities uh, for the educations. Uh, I want to learn something from uh, other countries, uh, what they are making. Cool. Florentia? Uh, hi, I'm Florentia Clive. I live in Spain and I am part of the board member of Wikimedia Spain. I'm also a researcher at university and it's my first time here with you. And um, as I work a lot with students with Wikimedia, I just wanted to learn about you and share some knowledge. Cool. Got it. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, hi. Uh, okay, so this is Goran. Goran Milovanov is speaking from Belgrade, uh, Serbia. I work as an external contractor uh, as a remote data scientist for Wikidata Dictionary for Wikimedia Deutschland. I will be presenting on a tool that I've developed for a Wiktionary called the Wiktionary Cognate Dashboard. Okay, and I will be sharing my screen, showing you what this thing can do for you and for other Wiktionary users. Uh, what background, uh, uh, I don't know, I held a PhD in psychology that was actually cognitive science, spent a lot of time in the academic track, uh, taught psychology to many people, some in Serbia, some in the United States, and that would be that would be the story. Thanks. Great, Melissa. Okay, I'm reading it for Melissa. Uh, hi there, I'm Melissa Guadalupe Urietas. I'm from Peru, uh, where I'm also best, and I work with the education team at the Wikimedia Foundation. So excited to see today's presentations. Yeah, thank you, Salish. Thank you. Hola, hola. Hola, hola, hola. 
Yes, thank you so much for studying it for Melissa. Can you do one for yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm a colleague of Melissa. I also work with the education team at the Wikimedia Foundation, and I'm excited uh, to be part of this uh, presentation. And Arine? Uh, hi, uh, I'm Arine uh, from Jordan. Uh, I'm a pharmacy student um, at the five year and uh, I'm a university ambassador uh, for the Wikipedia education program in my university, Hashimoto University. Um, I'm happy to be a part of uh, this meeting. Uh, this is my second time in uh, meeting. Thank you. Cool. Are we, we have two Florentias, that's nice. Um, and for the end, as I said, I'm Philip Mankovic. I'm the chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. I'm also the chair of Wikimedia Serbia and have been involved with education in Wikipedia for a long, long time, since 2005, basically. So yeah, uh, we're here and that's it for introductions. And now we can, uh, I'll just, I'm just going to paste the agenda here. Um, oh, well, I have an information that Krishna or other board member is trying to um, join as well with the, but he's having issues with the Zoom application. Um, so our agenda for today, apart from introductions, um, is going, it looks like this. I'm just going to post it as a message. Um, we have updates from the user group board. Does anyone here want from the board want to do that? I guess I can do it. <laughs> so in the past few months, we've been uh, basically preparing for Wikimania um, because we were organizing the Wikimania uh, education space. And that was a, a huge task and uh, Shani was doing most of that work. Um, and that wasn't the, our main focus uh, until August. Um, and we've been trying to uh, create this um, tech uh, survey uh, or tech needs survey. Uh, and we plan on letting it out in the, uh, in the open uh, sometime soon, but we do need to finish it up. Um, so that's mostly what we've been doing in the past uh, months, but also we've, we're start, we've started preparing for the uh, education uh, conference, Wikipedia and education conference next year. Uh, we're soon going to uh, determine the place for the conference, but we know that it's going to be, it's going to take place in the latter half, in the second half of, the, of 2020. So, um, we'll probably have some more info about that pretty soon, um, but that's it for now, I think. Um, as for updates from Wikimania, I'm not sure what there was, um, what was planned for this uh, topic uh, of the agenda, but basically we've been, um, the, the Wikimania uh, experience for me, at least personally, was pretty great. Um, maybe Susanna and some other people who were at Wikimania can show, uh, can tell us their opinions. Uh, but I think the education space was pretty uh, all right. There were you know, interesting panels, lightning talks and um, uh, keynote speakers. So to me, the, 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 the program was pretty diverse. Um, but um, maybe I'm not the best person to comment on that uh, since I was one of the co-creators of the education space. So I'm, I'm interested to think about what other people think. Anyone? Silash, not to put you on the spot, but... <laughs> I wasn't there, so I can't give my opinion. Yeah, too bad. Yeah, like um, I, I presented uh, in uh, one of the lightning talks. 
but I was also not there for most of the time because I was also leading one of the space at Wikimania. But for me, it was good. I, I loved all the lightning talks because I was, that was the only session I was part of. Um, uh, Melissa was also part of a few uh, sessions, but I don't think she'll be able to speak now. She's in a co-working space. Um, but it, it was good. Uh, I, I can share a newsletter article that uh, we published today uh, where Shani had shared her experience uh, as a user, as a, as a user group uh, member to uh, organize a Wikimedia space. Ah, thanks, Melissa. Yeah, you can see the article there. On the Great. Chat. That's a long <laughs> uh, op opinion piece. Be sure to read it afterwards. Um, so James asks, how do you who attended Wikimania feel about the new GTO with the background in search tech? Can you clarify GTO? James? Oh, CTO. <laughs> yeah, Chief Technical Officer, right. Um, I honestly don't have an opinion about that. Uh, yeah, I think we would need to uh, have a little bit more information about that before having any kind of opinion on it. Yeah. All right. Um, if there are no more comments, um, so updates from the working groups. Um, I, I don't want to steal too much time from this since we already have <laughs> spent uh, about 15 minutes and we do want to hear from our featured speakers. Um, so, so Krishna, when he joins, can give you an update about this. Um, but in the meantime, uh, we can hear it we, we can hear Florencia, um, and then we'll go to Goran. So Florencia, you have the mic. But you first need to unmute. Hi, it's okay? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, great. Well, um, I'm a little bit nervous because I didn't know exactly what you expect me to do here. But well, I just will explain to you what I'm doing at university. Um, uh, when I, uh, oh, um, I'm, a, um, I have the class of journalism, multimedia journalism at university. So uh, last year I asked the students to generate some content to, uh, for Wikimedia Commons and to do some articles for Wikipedia. When I met uh, Galder, I just started learning about the Basque um, program, Basque education program, and I'm trying to do something like that in my place, in my university. So for this course that we just started last week, um, we are working with two universities, Rey Juan Carlos and Complutense of Madrid. And uh, we have around 200 students and we are putting in practice something like um, Basque, um, I don't know how to explain, the Basque education people have done. So um, that's what I'm doing. I'm sorry for my English, I feel very uncomfortable talking in English. <laughs> Sorry. You're doing great. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. So I've started using the outreach dashboard and um, I think it's great. <laughs> so thank you for the ones that been involved there because I think it's great. Up to last year, I've been doing everything by hand. So... <laughs> For me, right now, it's a great uh, tool. Mm. I don't know if you expect me to just explain more things or... I yes, yes, please. 
more things. Okay, so uh, the problem I have in my area is that I'm the only Wikimedia and I have to go myself every class to explain to the students all the Wikimedia world. And uh, in one of the groups, we have around six groups right now. In one of the groups, uh, we've decided not to explain anything and ask them to look for themselves. So we will see the results. We just explain them uh, that it will be a good idea to make an article and also to put some uh, new material in Wikimedia Commons. And we just explain uh, what is the open knowledge and that's all. And they are doing themselves. The other five groups, uh, I went there myself and I explained e every student how we work, how the um, um, Creative Commons are, and all the philosophy around Wikimedia. And well, we've just started, so I have no results right now. Um, I hope they, they work well. If the group, if the group uh, we didn't explain anything works, I think it will be great because I will have less work because I have, this is not part of my official work at the university, I'm, I'm going to other colleagues' classes, so I have to work a lot, and for me, it's very exhausted. Uh, I mean, uh, I, um, I know uh, we do this as volunteers, but sometimes I don't have enough time. So it will be great if the students can learn themselves. That's it. Thank you, Florencia. I have a question, Florencia. Um, yes. When we did our program in the, the, the Basque Education program, we found a really hard moment uploading it to Commons because uh, some people in Commons don't expect to have like high quality videos made for articles. And we have this discussion. I, I know that some of you read about it. And yes. We talk about this when you started your program. Uh, did you find a way to make people in Commons more aware about this program, or we are with the same problem? No, I, w I think we are in the same place. But uh, for example, last year, what I had problems was um, in getting into Wikipedia the material of Commons. For example, some of my students made some infographics, a very good infographics that are in commons, but um, Wikipedians didn't allow that to be in Wikipedia because they said it was not relevant or um, I don't know how to explain. Uh, instead of being in, inside the article, it should be at the end with only one line that connects with Wikimedia Commons instead of putting the big picture. Uh, uh, the the big infographics inside the article. That's the only problem we had. But uh, I think we didn't have more than 15 images, so it's nothing compared like your case. Uh, but for this year, I hope um, I hope I don't have problems. I don't know. I don't know. When I start doing it, I will tell you. Thanks. You're welcome. So there's a question from James. Uh, I'm just going to read it out. What sort of bookmarks and other physical paper handouts do you find most effective? Please send diffs on common Commons users denying you your hosting to the email list, asking why they occurred. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know what paper handouts. So just physical paper, brochures, and, um, you know, uh, leaflets that you can... Pamphletos or material oh. ayuda, graphics. Ah, vale. Okay. <laughs> um, de, de, ma, uh, you're asking, uh, Galder, están preguntando qué 
es lo que subimos, ¿no? ¿Qué tipo de material subimos? Ok. Um, no, si entiendo bien es que, que, ¿qué tipo de material físico encuentras más, más práctico? Que para enseñar a la gente, si usas algún tipo de material o algún tipo ah, de, de libreto que les das. Ok. I, I'm sorry for speaking Spanish. I didn't understand, understand exactly what you were talking about. Uh, what I do, I have some PowerPoints prepared for the classes and uh, I just uh, learn by my own experience. I remake them for every class and there are very little uh, slides, about 15. And then I work with them all at the same time and we prepare, for example, our own uh, page, our own discussion page, and we send messages one from each other just to learn how to use the interface of Wikipedia. That's what we do. But I don't, um, uh, I, I don't have a material uh, right now uh, on Commons, for example. Uh, I just put on the Moodle of the university so they can check it every time they want. They don't understand very much right now how to search things in Commons. All right, and I have a question. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you um, said this already, but what part of Spain do you live in and work in? I, I live in Madrid. Okay. And I work with uh, Rey Juan Carlos University, that it's the place I work and I research for that university. And also with uh, Universidad Complutense, that's another university, that's where I've been uh, doing my PhD five years ago. So I work with um, professors from there. We, we work all together. Okay, so, but, but I'm, I'm... It's really interesting. You said there's no, there are no Wikipedians around, which is strange because Madrid is such a great city, right? Yes, but uh, the thing is, in my university, mm -hmm. in in Complutense, in in my area. So, mm -hmm. uh, for example, in my own university, there's no Wikipedians because I've been searching a lot, and there's no Wikipedians. And in the other one, in Complutense, there are some, but in other areas, nothing to do with mine. So um, next Thursday, I will meet a boy from uh, physics. So we are going to talk about what we do. <laughs> yes, but that's it, it will be my first time. <laughs> cool. Oh, mm. And Judith has a question. I can read it out. Can you give an example of how your students generated content and added something to Wikipedia? What was an interesting project? Um, let me check. For example, an, an example of what they've done. Um, let me see. I will look in my computer, right? Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, um, I, ca I can give you a link here. And uh, that, that was last year, one of last year groups. It was mm -hmm. the first time I prepared that kind of, of Wikipedia website. And that's what uh, the students done. So uh, I don't know if you were expecting for something like this. Th that's what I do. It's my, my, I'm beginning in this. I'm a, bit, a, bit, a little bit um, uh, ashamed of my things. <laughs> <laughs> no need to be. Mm. Also, Silesh asks, did you ask the students to form something like wiki clubs? Um, I invite them to my wiki club that it's twice a month 
at Media Lab Prado, that is a digital cultural center, but no one wanted to come. They see us like freaks, so it's difficult to get them involved. Uh, they cannot understand why we do this without having money. So for me, it's very difficult to explain them how to share things. All right. And uh, Liana asks, please share more, more about your documentary filmmaking plans. Oh, okay. Well, when I have more, I will give it to you. Uh, mm, we, I have a, um, a gr two groups that are from uh, Complutense that are making videos. So we ask them to prepare videos about um, audiovisual things. For, ham for example, when you use a camera, you need a tripode. I don't know the word in English for tripode. It's the thing that you put on the camera to be stand up. Yeah, tripod. Tripod, tripod. okay. So uh, one group of students is going to prepare a video uh, how you can prepare a tripod, right? Very little short film things to illustrate articles. That's what we are going uh, to do about filming, by filming things. And in, on the other hand, we are getting better articles from uh, the film industry in Spain. So I don't know if it's, that's what you asked. Um, that's great. I think it'll be really interesting to, to see those videos and I look forward to seeing them when you're done. Thank you. Um, cool. Do we know. have any questions? Uh, not a question, but more like a comment. Uh, yes. So, Rencia, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name perfectly. Uh, so, last year we tried to map the education, some of the education projects happening around the world. And I have shared a link on the chat where you can find the spreadsheet about it. Like, what are the different projects happening uh, in our movement? And there's a Google form to that. If, uh, uh, I'm sure that we are missing your activity. If you could fill that Google form to add uh, your activity, then uh, we can update the database on that. Uh, I have shared the Google form on the, uh, in the chat. Okay. And I can add it here. Thank you. Okay. I, I will complete it when we finish, right? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Any more questions? If not, then we can move to Goran. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, can anyone else hear me besides Philip? <laughs> hopefully yes. the audio. Yes. Hopefully the audio is good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So first I wanted to say to uh, Forencia, thank you very much for this uh, this presentation. I have also spent a considerable uh, time in my life um, educating people in universities, also the universities and you know, when I realize how many potential is actually lost by not including Wikipedia and other things from the Wikimedia University into, into the, to the typical university curricula, I don't know what to say. So this effort is really, it's, it's really great. So, uh, okay, so uh, what brings me here is, uh, well, it started as a Facebook discussion, but it's not, okay, between, I think, uh, Shani and me. I don't know if Shani is uh, with us now. Uh, however, uh, there were some mentions about extracting some statistics from the dictionary projects, etc. And then one of my colleagues from Wikimedia Deutschland actually provided something. And then I realized that we were beginning to um, do something that we already done <laughs> in a different way. 
And then it pinged Shani and told her, listen, we have this thing, which is called the dictionary cognate, uh, cognate dashboard. And uh, apparently she likes this. And uh, so there was a suggestion to present something about this thing on this meeting. So uh, here I am, that's the, that's the idea. So uh, this is uh, what I have, uh, uh, this is what I have in mind. So I will, at some point I will start sharing my uh, screen with you just to figure out actually where does that happen. Uh, where can I do it? Because I lost something. Uh -huh. Take a look. So, uh, okay. So share screen, share screen, share screen. Uh, can you please let me know if you can see this? Yes. 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 Okay, good. Now that's me. That's not the dashboard. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, just as a way of introduction, this is my Wikitech, uh, Wikitech user page and uh, arguably the wiki that uh, suffers from my edits the most because unfortunately with this data scientist uh, work that I do for Wikimedia Ocean, I often do not find enough time to contribute to Wikipedia in spite of, in spite of, my, in spite of my wishes to write out at least uh, a few articles monthly when I have the ideas and I have them from time to time. So. Uh, what you see here is the Victionary Cognate Dashboard. This will be the uh, object of this uh, presentation. I will show you what the thing does, okay? So while sharing the screen, I will also sharing the links in the chat window, okay? So that everyone can follow. And I will not begin by sharing the link on the dashboard itself, but I will share the dashboard's documentation. Here it goes. Uh, hopefully you have the link now. Uh, the documentation page on the uh, on Meta, okay, Meta Meta Week. Uh, so it all started. It all started in the. Uh, so let me find it in the following uh, fabricator ticket, okay, uh, with the community requests to provide uh, some additional statistics and analytics on the usage and the connections between the existing dictionary projects, whereby connections. In the first place, what is meant is uh, the study of the overlap in terms, in words, if you like, uh, that are present in uh, different language editions of the dictionary. Okay, so this task was formulated, and then Lea Lacra from Wikimedia Edition asked me to jump in and start building, uh, start building a data product that will actually support for that. So if you take a look at the documentation page that I share with you, the Wiktionary Cognitive Dashboard, it explains, so it is the dashboard that enables the Wiktionary editors and the wider community to determine what is missing from their projects here and where it can be found. And that is in the first place, that's the, that's the role of this uh, data product. So I will now share the link towards the dashboard with you, okay? So here is, um, here is the dashboard. If you open the dashboard now, you will see something that you might not like, and that is the timestamp of the latest update was only in 27th uh, uh, September, so three days ago. Actually, the dashboard is updated every six hours. Yeah, every six hours, it runs a backend procedure to collect some uh, new data across the, uh, from all the dictionary projects. Unfortunately, something broke uh, in our access to the databases, to the MySQL backend from, the, uh, uh, from one of the servers that we use at the Wikimedia Foundation to process the numbers, okay? So while we are waiting for the database administrators to fix that, and that's happening on this ticket here, if anyone's interested in, so the dashboard will unfortunately not, sorry, the dashboard will unfortunately not, not update um, uh, until that, that job is uh, fixed. But uh, generally it updates every six hours. So as soon as that is fixed, it should start, it should start refreshing every, every six hours, okay. So here what you see actually is it's uh, the dashboard's language, language page and, uh, sorry, the dashboard's landing page and the, uh, it's called the, the My Dictionary tab on the left side here, if you can see. So there are different tabs, okay? And then from different tabs, we access uh, different uh, functionalities of the dashboard. I will try to give you a walk through all of them. It shouldn't be too complicated, okay? And if anyone needs to use uh, more of a workspace, there is this little icon to here, so this string horizontal uh, bars that will make it a little bit more extended. Okay, uh, sorry. 
So here we go. We need to reload this. Okay. Uh, so uh, say for example, let's take let's take the English dictionary. So you can see here a drop down menu. So you can you can select or you can actually search for any dictionary here. So here's for example the Serbian one. It's my Philippine, my native language, or here is the, I guess, Lithuanian. I'm not so good at language codes, uh, etc. Okay, so plenty of dictionaries are present here. And let's start with, say, for example, English dictionary. We're using English now, okay. Uh, so uh, the first task was to, was to provide for a study of the overlap between different language editions of dictionaries, okay. So, do not look at the charts to the left, uh, but take a look at this thing here, which is called the which is called the dictionary links data set. Okay, so you see the source column, okay, and the target column, and then the number of links. Okay, so the first row says English dictionary MG, which is if I can pronounce that in English correctly, Madagascaria. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, and then we have in the second row, English dictionary, French dictionary, and then a number. For example, this number, which is one million and, and something. Okay. So the table actually tells you how many terms there are in the English dictionary that are also present in the French dictionary and vice versa. Okay. So the table here encompasses, you can see here at the bottom of the table that you can actually change, look at the different pages because it's a long table so we do choose not to present everything at once right uh, you can t you can have an overview of uh, how many items does the English dictionary share with all other dictionaries that we that we have in the Wikimedia universe okay and all or most of the data sets from this dashboard can be downloaded from buttons like this it says here download CSV so you can download it and when you download it, right, okay, so I will put it somewhere. Uh, okay, so let's say download and then say open with LibreOffice, okay? Because we are talking about huge data sets here most of the time. We were talking about even larger data sets than this one. Uh, actually, you can download everything and then expect uh, locally, not in the dashboard, but on your local computer. So this, this chart's here, okay? So once again, we are using the example of the English dictionary. The title says the more shared links with, okay? So on the vertical axis, we have, uh, we have actually the number of uh, items that are shared. And then the top 25 dictionaries are presented here. Top 25 in terms of how much do they share with the English dictionary? Okay, so you can, of course, change that to French, for example, or any other dictionary. It will take a while for the dashboard to recompute it, and then you can see what's the distribution of these shared links among the French dictionary and the others. And, uh, uh, of course, well, you know, sometimes people are interested in this sort of top statistics. Say, uh, I want to know what dictionaries are more, most similar to, say, Russian dictionary, or I don't know, German or Spanish dictionary, okay? But uh, this second chart at the bottom is a bit more useful, I would say, uh, because the motivation should be uh, a motivation to develop your dictionary. And in that case, if, uh, if you want to learn uh, what is missing from your dictionary, you should start looking not for those dictionaries that actually contain the same information and share a lot of links with you, uh, uh, links in terms of shared entries, of course. But you should, of course, take a look at the tail of the distribution. You want to see uh, what dictionaries have the, uh, uh, the, the, the smallest share of items with, uh, with your dictionary, right? So this, uh, this bottom chart here, the red line, and the data on the vertical axis tells you what are the uh, top 25 dictionaries from, for, that, are, that are not actually sharing their entries with you, right? So with whom your target dictionary selected here shares the least amount of, of entries. Uh, okay, so I will skip these two tabs here, the hubs tab and the anti-hubs. I will show you what do they do later, okay? They're a little bit more complicated to explain, but but uh, could be could be useful to some uh, because I want to show you this. Uh, so if you want to perform any analysis of on your own about the uh, amount of shared items between dictionaries, we offer the full data set that we use here. Okay, 
So this data set here uh, is uh, the full, as it, as it says, it's links data set, okay? So you have all the dictionaries present in source and target alongside the number of links that are shared between them. Uh, now the thing, you can search this table. You can navigate, uh, you can navigate uh, the, uh, the, the, the pages and uh, also you can search by saying, I don't know, English dictionary, okay. Uh, like this, okay, so it will take some time for it to, to sort it out, etc. But the thing is that this is really, I mean, it first it takes really, it, take, it takes uh, some time to, to sort it out. So the suggested way of working with it is simply to download it, okay? I will not do it now, it's a large file, okay? So uh, as I said, most of the things from this dashboard are offered as uh, downloadable open, open data sets, okay? Uh, now, in opinion of some of the users of this system, the uh, central and the most important, the most useful, I would say, feature is found in this I miss you tab, okay? It's easy, and it says here in, at the very top, select your dictionary to generate a table of top 1,000 entries that are shared across the dictionaries but not present in your project, okay? Uh, now, assuming that you will not uh, be able to enter hundreds of thousands of tens of thousands of new entries manually to your dictionary, but you're still motivated to develop it further, uh, we offer you here a data set of the top 1,000 most used words, entries, the way you like it, okay, across all the dictionaries that are not present in the language edition that you're interested in, okay? So we can take a look, for example, at the uh, uh, Spanish dictionary, the S dictionary, and so these are the top, top, top 1,000 words that are not found there, but are found in other dictionaries, okay? So in the left column entry, we have the entry, and in the right column, we give you the information, the number, in how many dictionaries is that word, is that entry found, okay? Once again, you can download that, right? Uh, okay, so just to remind you, the dashboard is uh, refreshed, updated regularly every six hours, okay? Under normal circumstances, which we do not face now because of this broken thing with the, with the, with the MySQL st uh, storage that we are waiting for the uh, members of the database team to, to fix. Uh, so when you change something in your dictionary, for example, you're looking at this table and you add the word Dutch to it, say, right? Uh, you will not see the change immediately in this dashboard, right? So it will take six hours for the regular updates to run. And then it might, might also take additional one or two hour due to data transitions that needs to occur to actually be able to see the change that you've entered. So to remove, say, a word from this list because now you have it in your dictionary. Okay. So it, this, this thing does, does, doesn't work with a lot of data, but you really have to be patient with it, okay? Uh, now, another feature which, you, which many people find really useful, I mean many people, many people in terms of the, those people that are, whose feedback I was able to collect, me or, or Leila Kra from, from Berlin, uh, the compare option. Okay, so the thing here is, this is this might be very useful for any dictionary user, but uh, uh, you really have to be very, very patient with this feature. Okay, so it says here at the top, so you need to select the source in a target dictionary. So here they are, the source and the target dictionary, and then click generate. Now, what will happen? So it says here, the dashboard generates a table of all entries that are found in the target dictionary here, but that are not found in your source dictionary. Okay. Now, the thing is, so these data sets, the comparison that data sets are not pre-computed. Why? Because they are really huge data sets. It takes a lot of time to compute them out. Okay. And you can imagine the number of pairs of dictionary existing. So it would be taking, well, not hours, but days of processing on our servers in Wikimedia Foundation's analytics, uh, uh, analytics area to, to finish that computation. So we choose to offer this feature, okay? But the computation is happening on the client side, which means close to your local machine, which means if you are trying to compute a comparison set between two large dictionaries, that will take minutes, okay? 
you will be receiving some feedback from the dashboard, but you have to be very patient with it. In the end, it will deliver the data set that you're looking for. So, so far we had zero failures in the delivery of this comparison data set in spite, in spite of the fact that the operation is pretty massive, okay? So I will not start it here, uh, except if I can, I don't know, uh, accidentally figure out two visionaries that are not maybe too large, but this is how it would look like. Okay, so if, if this starts taking too much time, I will have to reload the dashboard. So you click, you select your source in your target dictionary, you click generate, and then you follow feedback here, saying generating data sets, we are now comparing dictionaries. And then later on, the feedback will change by saying sorting the result, delivering the result. And once the, the result is computed out, you will see a huge table generated here. Um, I was even hesitant about whether whether that table should be placed on the dashboard or not, uh, because it doesn't make too much sense to com you know to to, to search uh, through a web interface a table with say I don't know a million or two million entries. Okay, but you always have the download CSV thing, right? So I will stop this comparison now at this point. Okay, so I will I will reload I will just reload the dashboard because as I told you that it would take it would actually take uh, take take minutes. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, okay, so I see the questions, I see the questions, but if you, if you just allow me to uh, finish the walkthrough the, uh, uh, of the dashboard, and then I will address the questions, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, most popular, well, this is simply a list of the most popular entries across the dictionaries, okay. So I don't know, for me, this is really interesting. I mean, it tells us actually what is the, if you like it that way, to put it that way, it tells you what the world is about, right? So water is found in 104 dictionaries and then dog, er, which I really don't know what it means, cat, uh, eye, bird, etc. So for people who, who, who really like to, to play with statistics, this is not, this is not too useful for uh, putting any additional efforts into your language version or the one that you that you want to develop any further, but it's fun. I mean, having to uh, learning learning about the most frequently used uh, things. Um, okay, so finally, before I start addressing your questions, I like to show you these uh, two tabs for which I told you it uh, might be a bit complicated. But uh, so the one thing called hubs. There is a disclaimer here saying, "Note, please be patient. We are rendering a huge network of dictionaries because the graphics here." Uh, this this network presentation here can be quite heavy on the on the front end uh, uh, and on the client side. Okay, so here's the idea. So what is that we are looking at? So uh, each of these squares, you can drag them, do whatever you like with them. So each of these squares here uh, represents. Come on, now it's slow on my client side. Okay, so let me just uh, do something. Say, for example, what they don't need opened another browser. Mm -hmm. Good. So let me see if I made it work any better. Okay, so each of these squares represent uh, a dictionary. Okay, so the English dictionary, the Madagascar version, and this one I think will be French. Okay, the large, the really large ones. What's this? Uh, uh -huh. This is the, the Russian one. Okay, here we go. Uh, so, what do we present here? This is actually a, a, a presentation, a representation of the similarity patterns across dictionaries. Now, what does that mean? So, we, as I told you in the introduction, the very beginning, okay, so the first idea was to study, the first task was to study the overlap between dictionaries. Uh, in other words, figuring out how many shared items do they have. But uh, in our intermediate data sets, not on the intermediate data sets, in the links data set, this data set that I've shown you here that you can download, uh, we actually know for, say, the Russian dictionary, we know exactly how many links does it share. When I say links, I mean how many entries does it share with the Polish dictionary, with the Romanian dictionary, with the Serbian dictionary, with the English dictionary, etc., with all other dictionaries. Okay, be it zero. It might be zero theoretically, right? It does not happen, okay? But, uh, uh, so that means that we can actually describe one dictionary by an array of numbers, and those numbers act almost as coordinates in a geometrical space, telling you 
on each dimension, how many shared items does that, for example, Russian or English dictionary have with all other dictionaries, right? So when you have that numbers, you can actually, there are mathematical ways, that's uh, uh, some of the things that we do in, in, in data science. There are some mathematical approaches that help you deliver the index of similarity between two things, right? By, but by looking at how similar their distribution of shared items is across all other dictionaries in this case, okay? So we first compute these similarity indexes and then we visually represent them in the following way. So you see all these arrows and uh, all these, these links between the nodes in this graph, okay? So if you take a look at this larger dictionary, say the English one, the one from the Madagascar, uh, French, Russian, etc., you will actually see that many other dictionaries are pointing towards them uh, in, this, in this chart, right? So what's the idea here? The idea is here is the following one. So uh, we take one dictionary, right? And we ask which dictionary has the most shared information with you, the most, the, the, the largest number of shared items with you, okay? We find that dictionary and then the, the dictionary that we started analyzing points a link towards that other dictionary with whom it shares a lot uh, of, of information. So they're called neighbors in this or nearest neighbors in this type of analysis, right? So why this visual representation? Uh, well, you know what, the links data set itself, this one, well, it's pretty tedious to figure out from all the pairs of dictionaries what dictionaries are in any way dominant or where does your dictionary finds a lot of neighboring uh, uh, entries so a lot of similar information, right? So then we thought, okay, let's try with this, uh, with this visualization, but it's always, always very, very difficult to uh, visualize in a comprehensible, in a really useful, in a comprehensible way, very complex data sets like this one. Okay, so uh, if you spend some time playing with this thing, uh, you can find your dictionary. You can also select a dictionary by label, say, I don't know, here's the Italian one, okay? Uh-huh, and then you click on the Italian one, and then you see only its immediate neighborhood. And uh, if I move him here, you can see, so uh, it shares a lot of information with the English dictionary, with, I think, the Polish dictionary, this thing from Madagascar, the Madagascar dictionary, and also, uh, what is this? This SCN, I really don't know the language code, also shares a lot of information with the, with the Italian with the Italian dictionary, okay. So it takes some time to run through this thing and uh, in the end you can find uh, find your dictionary or the one that you're interested in and see what's, what's happening there. The anti-hubs, this thing here, essentially the same thing, only that uh, dictionaries are pointing towards those dictionaries with whom they share a minimal amount of entries, so the least amount of entries, okay. So this is useful to figure out what dictionaries are really underdeveloped and uh, what are the most critical dictionaries that should be, should be addressed uh, if there is a way to start uh, filling in uh, 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 useful information there and making links between their items, their entries, uh, and the entries from, uh, the entries from other, other dictionaries. Uh, Okay, so uh, I, I would say that would be what, uh, uh, that would be, yes, uh, CN could be Sicilian, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. Thanks, Philip. So that, that would be what, what, uh, uh, what I plan to, to show you uh, from my perspective. So let me, let me see. So yes, uh, I shared the documentation link and uh, the extension Cognate, it's, it's not really something that would be interesting to you. This is the talk page. Here are the public data sets. So if you don't want to download from the dashboard, so public data sets are here. Everything that we use to produce um, the visualizations and all the tables that you found in the dashboard can be found here among the public data sets. Who is interested in the code? Uh, this is developed in the programming language R. So the R code is uh, found here on, the, on our GitHub, okay. And I'm not sure if anything else except for one ticket, this fab ticket here, I will share the link to it because, so uh, if you have a request for a new feature, so if you have a request uh, 
for a new feature on this dashboard, I shared it in a chat window. So this is the page, the Cognitive Dashboard Request Tracking. So when people need a new feature, they should contact uh, Lydia or Leah here. Okay, and then we will figure out when and how the feature can be can be delivered. So, yes, that would be from uh, that would be from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was me. That was me. So, so James had a question. You want to address that? Address that? Let me see. I'm just now. I'm just now. Uh, just now looking at the questions. So, what was the first one? I can't find the answer. Question. So, Jess, how do you calibrate semantic dimensions? For example, you can sort a task uh, list using graph network methods with or without geometric analysis those graphs and uh, not just a small number of dimensions. Every semantic distinction, like one many, male, female, for not work, you can see rockiness or all potential dimensions to use and most of the missing pieces. When you do, how do you scale the relative numeric values of the dimensions? Oof, good question, for which I might uh, could, uh, just, just forgot the answer. And that is, let me take a look at our code and see exactly what I was doing there. Uh, sorry, I have to stop sharing this uh, for a moment. So let me see exactly what was done here. What was the approach taken here? Because in, uh, in most of the semantic systems developed for, for, uh, uh, for Wikidata, I make use of the latent Dirichlet allocation. And here I did use the model-based clustering from the M cluster package. And that would be, that would be, let me show you just one second. That would be something called uh, M cluster from uh, from R, which is a model based uh, clustering uh, based on uh, Gaussian. Sorry, I'm typing the response so that you can actually use the Gaussian mixture of uh, no, based to the um, mixture of Gaussians. Uh, sorry, mixture of Gaussians. Okay. So if you ask, if you ask, how do we perform the clustering uh, uh, um, of the dictionaries uh, in this in this network visualizations? That's done by model-based clustering. The initial matrix is the scaled matrix of interlinks existing between all the all the dictionaries. If that satisfies you, um, so that's that's one thing. But just let me see if I use something else to from the visualization or is this just a simple search from for uh, nearest neighbors <laughs> I think I think I'm almost sure that the network visualizations that you've seen so not the clustering which is represented by colors I really tried to try to avoid talking about it because it's, it's, it is technically technically complicated but this this question makes me makes me very happy uh, 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 but I think the links are actually direct links looking through the, the full higher dimensional space and searching, simply searching for the nearest neighbor in terms of how many links are shared, right? So I think that's how the nearest neighbor graph is developed here, I'm almost sure. And the, what, you, what you see is different colors there representing uh, clusters of dictionaries with uh, similar, uh, similar share patterns with others. That's the model-based uh, uh, clustering from the M plus package from R. It's quite quite popular, I have to say, and it was I think initially developed in geosciences to study the distributions of earthquakes, or at least uh, that's that's what I can recall. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, do we have more questions? So feature request. Expose scaling coefficients on task uh, task ranking. Could, could you just please uh, 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 clarify that a little bit more? What would you like to see exactly? Do you mind if I, mind if I uh, just just say, say instead of uh, it's, it's quite quite complicated. Quite complicated. I really appreciate, I really appreciate the work you've done, done on this, and I'd love and to I'd see, love it. To see it. Have a uh, way to sort, sort different, different tasks, tasks that it proposes, proposes, whether it's it, it words, words or things or important dictionaries uh, 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 to address. address. <clears throat> There's got to be some kind of multiple, multiple factors, factors in there. 
And each one, each one of those has a scaling coefficient. And maybe, I, I'm not familiar with m clust, but it could just be two, you know? The, the final ranking coefficient could be determined by a linear combination of two units. So um, I'll try to follow up if you want to on the fabricator task with the specific. Totally. If you want to, <clears throat> if you want to post the link to the code that you were looking at, uh, where you call M clust, I'm sure I could find it from that. Uh -huh. Yes. So here is the link. Okay, and you you need to take a look at the line 192 in the code. And then, of course, the line 197, where we actually, where we actually call the M class procedure. Okay. Yes, and actually here it is. Sorry to interrupt you, but take a look uh, in, in relationship to your previous question. Take a look at line 207 in the code, okay, where you will actually see that this thing uses the Hellinger matrix, okay? So, which means we take every Wiktionary, then we normalize its distribution of shared entries across all other Wiktionaries, okay? Then we treat that as a probability distribution and the distances are actually computed by taking the Hellinger distance between them. So it's not based actually on direct, uh, direct observation of the shared items, but it's actually based on the Hellinger distance between between the distributions derived from uh, uh, discrete discrete share and trees data. So I apologize, but it's been a while since I've developed this thing and uh, it's been a while since I look at this code, so. Okay, but if, if there is anything, anything else that you're interested in, or if you want to, if you need a new feature on this, this dashboard, so once again, that can be done here, okay? So for new features, for new features here, and for discussions, if you want to discuss anything with me about this dashboard before you actually decide to, to uh, ask for a new feature formally, this is the, uh, this is the, project, uh, the project talk page, okay? Okay, can we hear each other? Yeah. Cool. Does anyone have any other questions? If not, then we have some more time. We have like 20 more minutes. Does anyone have anything else they want to talk about to raise a an issue or just chat. So if not, then I guess we can wrap. And yeah, I, I would just like to say thank you to both of our speakers. I think these were re both really interesting and, um, and I, I was glad to hear you both speak. So thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. There's another question from Jace, James. How about the Wikipedia analog of the system forgotten, I, I presume? Goran, you need to be unmuted. Sorry, Philip, I didn't unmute my mic. Give me, give me a second, please. Uh, so I will share something with you here. Uh, as soon as I find the link. So actually we have something, we have something which is uh, yeah, in a way similar, in a way different from this thing. 
for Wikipedias. It's actually based on, oh, where is the link? Uh -huh. Okay, so it's actually based on uh, tracking the uh, on the, on tracking the Wikidata entities as they are used across across Wikipedia's. Okay, so it's a little bit more general than this this uh, thing for uh, for the dictionaries. Okay, so that would be what screen this is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So can you see this thing? Hmm? Can, can anyone tell me if you can see an, yes. another dashboard here? Yeah. Okay. So okay. So we have, yes, we have similar things for for Wikipedia. And now let me share the link with you. Uh, so I have too many open things. Ah, here is the chat. Okay. So this is something which is called. Aha. Uh -huh, so why did this happen? Okay. So. A place to take a look at is this one, okay? And also, let me see, let me see, let me see. Also, you might want to take a look at everything under the. So, you want to take a look at this page most probably, and uh, uh, everything uh, under the Wikidata Concepts Monitor System. So, I'm not sure, I think I've shared this with JS privately. Okay, so I will see to copy these things. Uh, so uh, to copy to everyone, right? So here are the links. Okay, so that's that's something which is called the Wikidata Consist Monitor System, and uh, that's something similar but more powerful with uh, more and uh, better and more detailed information that actually tells you something about the semantics of not only Wikipedia, the spe specifically Wikipedia, but also other classes of projects in the universe, like Wiki Voyage, Wiktionaries, it's Wikibooks, etc. But it's based on tracking the usage of uh, Wikidata entities across, uh, across the universe. In other words, uh, across these different projects, across the whole Wikimedia universe. In other words, it, uh, actually, you, you can simplify and say it looks at what is found in the info boxes and tries to figure out what projects and what pages and what Wikidata entries are similar in what respect uh, and in respect to how they're used in, in Wikipedia. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a large project. We are ma ma maintaining it for three years already in Wikimedia relations. That um, uh, if you take a look at the system, it's actually a central analytic system for, uh, system for Wiki, Wikidata. Uh, but it's only only manifestly similar to what happens on the dictionary dictionary dashboard there um, essentially the nature of the data is uh, quite different so uh, i don't know any any other questions on this talk that i might help address maybe Mm -hmm. Philip? Yeah. Uh, any, any other questions that I might, uh, might, uh, might address at this point? None for me. But thanks. Thanks so much for, for doing this and for getting us acquainted with, with these <laughs> statistical uh, thingies, uh, thingies, which might be of use to some. some. Um, and also, and also thanks to Tia for sharing, for sharing grassroots, grassroots efforts. Effort. And I hope that we'll hear some more from you guys in the future uh, to check up on what what you're doing. Maybe in a few months, as an, another uh, in another turn of these uh, featured speakers. Um, and if there are no more comments, then I'd like to wrap this up and thank everyone for joining and participating tonight or today, depends on your time zone. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Philip. Okay, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank see you. you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one. It's very nice Have to meet day. you. See you. Bye.